If you're an investor and you invest in stocks that pay you a dividend, then you need to know about the tax. I want to go over exactly how dividends are taxed here in the UK, and that will also include dividends that you have in US stocks. And I want to discuss some of the most tax efficient ways to hold your dividends as a UK investor. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a qualified financial advisor. If you require any specific information on your tax, please contact the relevant person that is a trained advisor. Okay, so I think there are three things that we just quickly need to go over. The first thing is that you do not pay any tax on dividend stocks or dividends held within an ISA. The next thing is that you do not pay any tax on dividend income that falls within your personal allowance. So this is the amount of allowance that you are given as an individual each year that you do not have to pay tax on. As of right now, 2022, this sits at 12,750 pounds, but this will also include your salary and any other income that you may have. This means that if you didn't have a salary coming in or any other means of income, then your dividend tax-free allowance would be much higher because you would have the 12,570 personal tax-free allowance and you would also have your dividend allowance that sits at £2,000. You would have near on £15,000 that you could have in dividend income without paying tax. But most people obviously do have other income sources, so you just need to bear that in mind. And as I've just alluded to, the third point is that you get a dividend tax-free allowance every year. So right now, this sits at £2,000 per year per person. So this means that the first £2,000 of dividend income is completely tax-free. So clearly the most tax-efficient and smart way to go about dividend investing would be to do your dividend investing through a stocks and shares ISA, because this way you pay no tax. This is only up to £20,000 per year as this is the tax-free ISA allowance. So you would look to hold your dividend stocks within your ISA allowance and max out that every year to the £20,000. If, however, you've maxed out your ISA allowance or the platform that you have your ISA within doesn't actually allow you to invest in individual stocks or stocks that you're interested in that give you a dividend, then you may need to look for another tax efficient way. And the most tax efficient way to go about this would be not to exceed your £2,000 dividend tax free allowance. But of course, that doesn't work for everyone. So we're now going to break down how much tax you would have to pay if you can't hold all of your dividend stocks within your ISA allowance. On the screen now, you will see the tax band rates for the UK as of 2022. Depending on your income per year, you will fall into one of these tax band rates. So the tax band rates are as follows, personal allowance, basic rate, higher rate, and additional rate. And that will purely depend on how much you earn. And this is essentially saying that if you earn up to but not exceeding £12,570 a year with all of your income sources added together, you will pay 0% in tax. But if you earn between 12571 and 50270 then you will be paying 20% tax and so on. But for dividend incomes, it's a little bit different. On the screen now, you will see the tax rate on dividends depending on which one of the tax bands you fall into. To work out which dividend tax band you fall into, you just simply look at all of your income sources and add them together. So this will include salary, dividends, and any other income that you may have. And then you see which one of the tax bands that you fall into. I think it's just worth noting here that as of April 2022, the dividend income tax rate will be increasing by 1.25%. And this is to support the NHS and social care. Okay. That was a lot of numbers, but let's actually look at an example that HMRC have provided on their website. The example that they give is that there's someone that gets £3,000 in dividends per year and earns £29,570 in wages. The first thing to do would be to see which tax band this person falls into. So as I said, you take the £3,000 of dividends and you add it to the wages that they earn from their salary and anything else, but in this case, we've only been told two income sources. So that would give a total income of 32,570. So this would mean that this person would fall into the basic rate tax band. And this means that they would pay 7.5% on any dividend income that they have and 20% tax on the salary that they earn. Remember that you have the tax-free personal allowance of 12,570 per year, and you also have 
the dividend tax-free allowance of £2,000 per year. We now need to work out the taxable income that this person has. So we're going to take their salary and we're going to minus the personal allowance of 12,570. And this gives us 17,000 pound. So 17,000 pound they can be taxed on and that's from their salary. And as we've just established, they can be taxed 20% of this. Next for the dividends. This person in this example is getting 3,000 pound per year in dividends. Now we know the first 2,000 pounds worth of dividend income is tax-free. So this leaves 1,000 pound to be taxed on. And we know that this person falls within the basic rate. So they will be applicable to 7.5% of tax. Remember, if these dividends are held within an ISA like the stocks and shares ISA that has a limit of 20,000 pound tax-free per year, as long as you don't go over that limit, you will pay no tax on them dividends. And remember, if you earn more and you fall within one of the higher tax bands, then you will need to pay more tax on your dividends. We've covered the basic tax rules that you as a UK investor must know if you are holding any stocks paying you dividends. But what we've been through so far is assuming two things. We are assuming that firstly, you are only holding UK dividend paying stocks. And secondly, we're assuming that you're not paying yourself an income in the form of dividends from your business. If either one of these is the case, then things do get a little bit more confusing. Let's talk now about the tax that you would need to pay as a UK investor if you hold US dividend paying stocks. These could be stocks like AT&T or Disney. If you are holding US stocks, then there is something called a withholding tax that you will need to pay regardless of whether or not you hold these US stocks within an ISA. The only exception here, and the only way that you don't pay this withholding tax is if these US stocks that are paying you dividends sits within a SIP. If they sit within an ISA or anywhere else, then you do have to pay this withholding tax. And I'm just gonna read out what Hargreaves Lansdowne has said about this. Withholding tax is a tax levied by an overseas government on dividends or income received by non-residents. For example, the US government charges non-US residents withholding tax of 30% on any income received from US investments. 30% seems like a lot to be taxed on any investments that you hold. If you are paying 30% purely in tax every time you get a dividend income, your dividend incomes are soon going to be very, very small. Luckily, the UK government has agreements with the US and other countries called double taxation agreements that limits this fee from 30% tax down to 15%. 15% in the case of US stocks. There is a particular form that you do need to complete in order to get this 15% tax withholding rate instead of the 30%. And I believe it is called a W8BEN form. I'll pop it up on the screen now, but yeah, definitely make sure you're completing that if you are a UK investor investing in US stocks, as that's really important. Those are the main things that you need to know as a UK investor if you invest in stocks that pay dividends. If you're watching this and you have anything else to add, please drop a comment below. If you have any further questions or want me to do a further video about this, again, pop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.